don't and don't forget next week is the PGA merchandise show where Savvy and I are going to be. We would love to have your comments and suggestions as to what you would love to see us cover. Uh, we're doing Tuesday. We're going to be at the demo day. Then Wednesday and Thursday, we're going to be on the floor. And uh, on the Monday and Friday, we're going to be visiting with uh, some of our teachers and students uh, from the area. So uh, stay tuned for that. And we look forward to those comments and questions. Hi, boys and girls, Sean and Savannah here. Mm -hmm. And um, we have another fabulous, you know, video for you. Uh, many of you have been asking, you know, what is it about? How do we start the swing? And this is we we had some nice oldies but goodies a while back. Mm -hmm. You know, I started uh, doing videos uh, late 2006. Well, how old were you that back then? What were you doing late 2006? You were playing a lot of soccer. I remember yeah. that. So <laughs> I remember traveling a lot of soccer. Yeah. So um, we had uh, videos entitled uh, Take Away and Starting the Swing. Mm -hmm. And we talked about uh, Crane Operator. That was a pretty good one. It's still there. It's an oldie, but a real goodie. But we're going to elaborate on that a little bit more today. And uh, we, we need to show you how your machine was designed. Mm -hmm. And notice how you came about yours instinctively. It just happens. Mm -hmm. And if you, you ask that to a lot of the tour players, and you'll see a lot of different ways of starting the swing. Mm -hmm. uh, you look at Matthew Wolf. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's now there's a very unique way of starting the swing. Yeah. And Tom Kite at the time used to bounce, and Gary Player used to knock his knee, and then Johnny Miller used to tap his right heel. Mm -hmm. So you can't start from a static position. Yeah. So when somebody asks us, um, Sean, you know, how do you start the swing? Is it the knee? Is it the foot? Is it the navel? Mm -hmm. Is it, I mean, they, there's all the colors of the rainbow out mm -hmm. there, Sav. So, um, and my answer is always none of the above. Mm -hmm. You should already feel like you're in motion, right? Yeah. So it's going to be different for everybody. Exactly. So in your case, go ahead mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and, Explain how you feel when you start your swing. Well, at a dress, it's kind of awkward to just like automatically go into your backswing, like from a static position. Right. So I kind of like do a little sway to kind of yes. emulate the motion of. Now, not a sway sway. Yeah, like right? a little, just like it. You, sometimes you can't even see it. It's just more of like a like a physical thing that I can feel. Yes. So it's, it's just like a little thing to like right. help me get back into that motion. And so what I see and, and what I really appreciate with what you do is it's a... Like a, rotation. It's a little rotation. That's yeah. right. So you hear so much of you got to rotate through the ball. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the soup of the day right now, right? Mm -hmm. And we're truly built and designed to do that naturally if we're on the right task. If yeah. that's your target, well, why would, you, why would you continue there when you need to go there? You're going to stop in your tracks, mm -hmm. do a little chicken wing, flip the wrists and all that stuff because we have to stop there. And the club head's got this momentum that it keeps going on. Yeah. And you're trying to stop that momentum because this is where you're trying to go. Mm -hmm. So you start with that little forward, we call it a forward press. That's yeah. the, the term that we use. So, and then it gives you some rotational momentum to go into the backswing. Yeah. If you don't rotate in the backswing, mm -hmm. then you will severely have a lack of rotational momentum for the yeah. follow through. Yeah. And I tell you, this is where we absolutely shine. This is where I can give a student mm -hmm. like you mm -hmm. two to three extra clubs in distance, yeah. which is what you had, by the way, yeah. compared to the average on the LPGA. Mm -hmm. So if you do a backswing and don't move your hips at all. Now, try to turn that way now. Doesn't that feel awkward? Yes. Feels difficult to do? Yeah. Now show us your patented Savannah backswing. So from there, doesn't it feel really easy mm -hmm. to deliver toward the target? Yeah. So your initial move at address is to help you make more turn in the backswing. Yeah. 
which helps you make more rotation yeah. on the follow through. Yeah. So it, it really helps set up the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So a really good way to go about it. And this is, um, you know, let's say you were in the bush and you were going to get ready to, to do an, an ax. Uh, here, let me give you a tree. Our favorite Home Depot sledgehammer. <laughs> so there's your tree. And let me see you do a split hand grip. I know you're not a lumberjack by trade. So go ahead and split your hands further. There. Now do you feel the weight of that ax. Yeah. And get into a nice setup position here where you're getting ready to really deliver a powerful blow. Yes. So take that beginning there and show me how you would heave the axe into the backswing. There, what'd you do? I did that little rotation. You did that little rotation, didn't you? Yeah. And did you have to think about it? No. No, because you're getting ready to use, see that's why an axe is heavy. You feel yeah. the heft, right? Yeah. So this axe, we're getting ready to use the heft of that to deliver the blow into the tree. Mm -hmm. So if your job all day long was to chop down trees with an axe, you wouldn't yank it around like a pit bull with a rag doll. <laughs> no. You really hurt yourself. Yeah. So you feel how you're using, there, look at that. See how she's not a lumberjack, but yet she's a human being on planet Earth. And whether it's a sledgehammer, a pickaxe, a baseball bat, or mm -hmm. an axe, mm -hmm. that's how you're going to be able to do it. Yeah. Fantastic. So when we're using the weight of the instrument, to deliver the action, and, and what is the action? What's, what's the task throughout the years that you've appreciated the most? Uh, probably the door frame and using heft. All right, so she's a, she, she's a carpenter. <laughs> so the door frame, if we had this as your door frame, mm -hmm. and you wanted to deliver, you wanna squeeze that ball into the door frame, and when you said heft, the heft of what? The weight of your arms and club unit. The weight of the arms and club. Yeah. So you're using the weight of both arms and the club yeah. to squeeze that ball through that door frame. And look at that, look at that delivery position here. The hips are clearing, the hands are forward, and it looks like she's delivering through that door frame. There, now notice at the top of the backswing, mm -hmm. right? So go to the top and stop. Now, feel like you're going to use heft to deliver. What did you just do at the top of the swing? Like, moved into the ground. There we go, <laughs> right? So you notice how she gave herself some momentum. Mm -hmm. This is what we do. This is what we're amazing at. But if you pollute that mm -hmm. with make sure you kick the knee in and mm -hmm. make sure you turn body part A into position B, yeah. then you're throwing a whole loop into the system. So it's way better to perform a task. Mm -hmm. You got a hammer, you got heavy arms and a nice heavy hammer and you're squeezing that ball through that door frame in the direction that you want it to start. Yeah. Please go ahead. Okay, were you thinking? A little. There we go. <laughs> the ball kind of moved on the turf. Oh, ah, okay. Let's try that again. Awesome. So did you guys see that, uh, that little move on that last swing right there, which is that there's your, your patented little move forward. Mm -hmm. And notice the top of the backswing how when you get to the top of that backswing, and we're gonna talk about this transition in, in the next couple of videos where we're gonna do, you know, how to shift the weight into the backswing and then how to shift the weight into the downswing. So really stay tuned for those. We're gonna go into detail on that. And you'll see just how incredibly talented you already are for that, right? And one of the things that we talk about as golf professionals and we marvel at, like uh, when, when we watch Ben Hogan hit shots, yeah is we noticed that the, the lower body initiates the downswing before the arms reach the top of the backswing. Mm -hmm. It's like we're catching the downswing, we're catching the arm club unit with the kinetic chain. Yeah. And that's something that you don't have to think about when you're using the weight of the instrument to deliver through the door frame, yeah, right? Yeah, it kind of guides it for you. Exactly. 
So now, here's what I want to finish with with this particular video. And, you know, to get down the line views and, uh, and, our, and our little bonus stuff, because Munashe has an amazing little drill for you to work on at the gym, uh, which includes a medicine ball, of course. And you're going to see that in our episode on the premium channel. Again, it's only five bucks a month and you can cancel anytime. We don't do the refund stuff or, you know, it's like, hey, come on, man. It's, it's, it's a really good deal. We want everyone to be able to afford top quality golf instruction. Mm -hmm. And we've done our homework. Yeah. So, and thanks for being the proof of that. I appreciate that. <laughs> anytime. So, um, the perpetual motion drill. Mm -hmm. We've been, you've, you've seen this. If you've been with Wisdom in Golf for a while now, uh, you'll realize there's another, there's a video, an oldie but goodie, mm -hmm. a while back when Savvy was yay high. You'll even see a video of you, right? Mm -hmm. In those days, we we're working about on, uh, you know, keeping you centered. I still remember yeah. that video. And so the perpetual motion, you go to perpetual motion drill, PMD, Sean Clement on YouTube, and you'll see a really cool video on that. So what I'd like you to do, Sav, is the, you know, obviously the task for that is one that, uh, that is kind of secondary for you is cutting yeah. grass, right? Yeah. So show me how you would cut grass in both directions. So right now you're just letting the weight of the club and the arms cut the grass in both directions. Yeah. So let's take, let's see you take a little walk. Notice how the weight stays on the inside of the feet and notice the timing of it. Back yeah. up a little bit more and do that again. See how the brain knows when to step, how far to step. That's really nice savvy. So we are bilateral machines, mm -hmm. right? Remember the, remember Fon, you don't remember Fonzie. That's when I was a no. kid. Fonzie was a cool dude. <laughs> and he used to come in and go, hey, and he would have this, this exaggerated human walk, yeah. right? That of course we thought it was cool at the time, right? Yeah. With the leather jacket and everything else. So that exaggerated human walk. So if I have my, my center of gravity here and I want to step forward, I literally have to fall forward. Mm -hmm. I can't pull myself forward with my leg. As soon as I move forward with the leg, my foot goes into the air. The only way to take a step is to fall forward. So that center of gravity has to come forward. Right. When a sprinter is in the blocks, that center of gravity is already forward and they're, they're catching themselves as quickly as they can. Right. So as you fall forward, the swing of the arms helps bring you back up, yep. right? So in a walk, there's a, a beautiful balancing motion mm -hmm. that happens with the arms. Yep. So the way you're walking right now, mm -hmm. and you, you, you kind of got the, uh, the, the grade for our, um, our elephant walk. Yeah. <laughs> so imagine, if you will, Savannah's arms as the trunk of the elephant. And you were, uh, you were actually a cool story. Oh. The woolly mammoth when you were doing your figure skating. She was a good skater. So the, the, the arms are your trunk. Uh -huh. The chest is the head of the elephant. Uh -huh. And your, your legs are the front feet, uh -huh. right? So the, the, as you're swinging back and through, notice there's a wonderful rhythm that occurs. And I encourage everyone to do this drill. See how it's impossible to rush this. Yeah. You, you can't yank your arms back and through no. and then try to time yourself with that. No. So you're letting the arms swing and then the brain tunes in because you're an absolute gravity genius. So are you guys. And your brain knows exactly when to step. There's a perfect timing. Your, your, your body and your system are working at 40 million bits of information per second. Mm -hmm. Five, six, yes. one. So snare comes yes. on four. Exactly. Bass drum on one. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four. That's right. And and you know, just thinking about which brings me to let's say when I'm hitting a soft pitch. Yeah. That would be a 
what would, what would that correspond to on your drum set? So sometimes you've got to hit it with a little more pizzazz. That's it. So, so, so that, when you're hitting it with more pizzazz, mm -hmm. that would be a full seven iron. Absolutely. Versus a soft pitch at 50 yeah. yards. See, exactly. So when we talk about, you know, when we're hitting a soft pitch, so let's say I'll do a soft one, two, three, four, five, six to start, right? Yeah. So I'll get the ball rolling. Yeah. Isn't that cool? I got my own cue. <laughs> wow. How about that? <laughs> Very nice. Great Very timing. So this genius is already inside you. Mm -hmm. So when you're dealing with using the weight of the instrument, your timing automatically starts to fall into place. Yeah. And if your timing falls into place, and you see, she's a little under the weather today. Mm. And we were just doing some smooth swings. Yeah. And we just got an uptick of three yards. Yeah. So your average today with the seven iron is 163 carry, yeah. which w it used to be around 158, 160. Yeah. We just added three yards, but you're feeling like kind of in the dumps. Yeah. And because you're kind of energy low, you have to use more of the weight of the instrument. Yeah, you so, can't actually go after it. Right. And you notice your timing today has been a lot better. Mm -hmm. So the way that we show you things, mm -hmm. you can actually perform superbly when you're tired. Yeah. That means that 15th, 16th, 17th, and 18th hole, those last four <laughs> holes where you're dragging your feet, it's hot, you've been walking and all mm -hmm. that stuff, right? Well, you, you actually get to play better when you're tired mm -hmm. because you can't physically, you know. Strain. Strain, mm -hmm. exactly. So. Let me see you do a couple of nice, smooth um, seven irons here. Pretend you're in that perpetual motion drill. Good miss. So you missed that 157 yards. Mm -hmm. Nice. Oh, that is so good. Super flush. 162 carry. Something like that. Great spin. Yep, 160 carry. You caught that just a smidgen thin, but what an amazing swing that you put on that. Yeah. So after you've walked and you've done this perpetual motion drill, you're swinging back and through without stopping you get a really good sense of that timing and then you can just take that timing and plug it into your swing. Yeah. And it's, especially if you've got a, a proper task. So you'll notice uh, on our premium channel, we have uh, a video entitled Task Trumps Everything mm -hmm. and our top three tasks that, we, that our students really enjoy you know, to use. And once you've mastered that task and you're able to, so I'll give you an example, like a carpenter, you know, you, you, you start off, you got, you got the apprentice in, in, uh, in uh, university and he, get, he gets a, a construction job for, you know, the summer holidays mm -hmm. and you watch him start nailing a nail and he bends a bunch of nails and he's making a mess of things. And then a month later, it's tap, tap, whap, yeah. and the thing just drives right in. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't take very long to develop that kind of skill. Yeah. But you notice there's a beautiful harmony when you're using the weight of that instrument. Yeah. And that's something that, you've, uh, that you're really starting to master right now. Mm -hmm. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, it all boils back down to get yourself a solid task, use the weight of your instrument to deliver the task. Mm -hmm. And then you'll notice that when you get really good at the task, like in, you know, when you're getting ready to hammer a nail, here's the hammer, and you're getting ready to hammer this nail right here. Did you have to think about when to start your swing? No. No. You had a task mm -hmm. and your brain tells you, hey, I'm ready now. Yeah. And it's something that you should never have to think about. Yeah. Okay. So appreciate your help once again, Sal. No problems. We'll see you in the next one.